Specific heat capacity is something that causes students a lot of problems, but I really think it, it could be actually quite easy. Um, I really like this meme here, you know, this doge, you know, this uh, uh, many temperature, you know, wow, such hot. Did you know they actually tried to create a uh, Bitcoin currency called Doge Coins? <laughs> That's awesome. So um, let's talk about specific heat capacity. So it's formally defined as the energy needed to raise uh, the temperature of one kilogram of a substance uh, by one degree Kelvin. So what this really means, I mean, this doesn't really make much sense to a lot of people, right? But um, think about it, it comes from a definition. And the definition is going to be this, uh, well, this is the definition, sorry, but the, uh, there's an equation for it. I think that's going to help. Remember, heat is a form of energy, so that's why we're going to use Q, because Q is heat. And it's going to be given by mc delta t. That's the equation we're going to need. So this is like the main equation here for specific heat capacity. And this is uh, found in your data booklet, so you don't have to worry. Um, so then we can define things, right? We can define, okay, well, what's the heat? The heat itself then is going to be uh, measured in joules. Mass is measured in kilograms. Change in temperature will be in degrees Celsius, or it could be in Kelvin. And specific heat capacity then is this weird C. It's not the speed of light, by the way. And then later on we have a C as the speed of light. In this case, in thermal physics, it's the specific heat capacity. What it is, it's a property of all materials. So different materials have different resistance, so to speak, to raising uh, its temperature. So if you think about it, um, how much energy do you need to raise something's temperature? That is its specific heat capacity. So that means if something has a high specific heat capacity, it means you need a lot of energy to change its temperature. Some things uh, are really, really easy to change their temperature, right? Some things are really good, uh, good conductors of thermal energy. So as soon as you add a little bit of you know, uh, energy to them, they get really hot really fast. So specific heat capacity, let's think about the units for it. If you want to get C by itself, let's just maybe do it off to the side. If you want to get C by itself, you'd end up with Q over M delta T, wouldn't you? See, because you get C, you'd have to divide by M, divide by delta T. If that's the case, what are the units of Q? Uh, that's joules. Mass is on the bottom, that means it's kilograms to the negative one. And you got delta T, so that means it's degrees Celsius, negative one. There you go. Now the trick to solving these questions is going to be to remember that heat gained equals heat lost. So what I mean by that is you can write yourself some sort of equation like Q gained, let's just say. So Q gained, and you can say Q lost. This is gonna be the key thing here. Uh, so that way what you can do then, I'm just gonna see if I can uh, fix this here. What this means is that you can set up an equation for each side of what's going on. So you can think, um, is somebody losing uh, energy and someone gaining energy? And all the ones that are losing energy, put them on one side for Q loss. All the things that are gaining energy, put them on Q gained. Then just do a Q equals MC delta T equation for all of them. This is sort of the, the way to do it. So what I'm gonna do is show you a really nice, um, really gross example, but you can totally solve this. This actually was found on a paper too, so this is why I have it here. So you pour 200 grams of tea at 95 degrees Celsius into a 150 gla uh, gram glass cup, and that's initially at 25 degrees Celsius. What's the equilibrium temperature of the cup and the tea? And you're told the specific heat capacity of the tea. It's uh, the same value as water, because tea is pretty much water. That's why they put that in there. And the glass is 840. So see, it's got a lower specific heat capacity, which means it doesn't take that much energy to raise its temperature. That means it's really easy to make it hotter. So the glass is part of the situation here. I think it maybe helps to draw things a little bit. So I'm gonna try to draw, uh, I guess, a cup. I'll try to draw that. Let's see if I can draw, okay. Yeah, that's an all right cup, I guess. Um, and now we've got some tea being poured in, don't we? So we've got tea being poured in. Now think about this, which one is hotter, which one is colder? Can you see you've got the tea that's really, really hot? So because the tea is hot, and we've got the cup right here, right? Um, and we're assuming the cup is empty. The cup didn't have to be empty. It could have had water in it too at that temperature, right? Because you would assume that the cup and that water are already at equilibrium. But right now we have them uh, not at equilibrium, right? Right now we've got the uh, cup, whoops, actually I probably shouldn't do that because it's not there yet. It's just like this, it's an empty cup and we've got some hot tea being chucked in here. So we need to write ourselves an equation of Q lost equals Q gained. 
So let's try to figure that out here if we can do it. So Q lost equals Q gained. So who's losing um, energy? Who is getting cooler? I hope it makes sense that the T is going to get cooler as it meets the cup and the cup's going to get hotter. So we're going to say this is going to be Q of the T. It's going to sound like QT, haha, <laughs> QT. But it's going to be QT equals Q uh, cup, I guess we could say. That's how we're going to set it up because the T loses energy, the cup gains energy. And if we can set it up like this, now it becomes a lot more straightforward. It's just a matter of bookkeeping. It's annoying, but it's doable. So let's figure out what happens with the T. With the T, it's an M T C T delta T T, which I know if you heard just what I'm saying, it sounds the same. But it's the mass of the T times the specific heat capacity of the T times the change in temperature. Same with the cup. So we're going to go like this, M cup, C cup, and delta T of the cup as well. So because of this then, how do we actually figure all this out? We can actually now start putting in the value. So the mass of the T, let's see, it was, uh, is it 200? No, this is 200 grams, which is 0 0.2 kilograms. Always put proper units here. So 0 0.2 kilograms times the specific heat capacity of the T, which is 4186, times a change in temperature of the T. Now here's the sneaky part. You gotta think, we're going to have, uh, I mean, delta T really means one temperature minus another one. So which one's gonna be the largest, which is the smallest? We have to sort of figure that out. That's the only sort of sneaky part here. So we have a larger temperature minus a smaller temperature. Which is the larger or smaller? In other words, we're gonna have an unknown T. We're just gonna have a letter T we're gonna to try to solve for. Is the unknown, does it go here first or does it go second? Hope it makes sense. It goes second because that's going to be a smaller number here. That's the unknown. The bigger one is going to be the 95. That's because we know that when it reaches equilibrium, uh, it'll be less than 95. So that's how we know it's 95 minus T. Now we can set it up on the right side. We can say M cup. So the mass of the cup is uh, 0 0.15 kilograms. We have the specific heat capacity of the cup, which is 840 times delta T. Well, think about this now, which value is largest? Hope it makes sense that now the T is larger, the equilibrium temperature that we're gonna be solving for, that's gonna be larger than the initial 25 degrees Celsius. So that, again, that was a sneaky part I thought, was just notice this one and notice this one. One came first, one came second. You do have to figure that out because the equilibrium will be lower than 95, but the equilibrium will also be greater than 25. So we just do that to keep the numbers positive. Now it's just a matter of putting in the numbers and multiplying them with our calculator. So I'm gonna get out my trusty calculator here and I'm gonna do 0 0.2 times 4186 times 95. I end up with, this is a really ugly question. So seven, nine, five, three, four. Uh, minus, and I have to do 0 0.2 times 4186 times negative t. That's why I'm going to have uh, 0.2 times 4186. So I'm going to have minus 837.2 t. That's going to equal, ugh, this is really annoying, uh, 0.15 times 840 t. So that's going to be 126 t minus. 0.15 times 840, which is the same thing I just had, times 25, which in this case is 3150. So because that was a 3150, now I can, let's see, I can move all the different uh, values, all the different terms with T on them. I'm going to put them on the same side. T as in this letter T. So I'm going to take this one and move it over here, and I'm going to take this one and move it over there. So then I'm going to be left with, let's see, 79534 plus that 3150, and I end up with uh, 82684, I'm really annoyed by this question already, equals, and I'm gonna have 837.2 plus 126, that moves over, becomes positive, I have this number, T, and then finally to get T itself then, I'll do those two numbers divided by each other, right, because I wanna divide it out. Uh, boy, this is really annoying. So I have eight, two, six, eight, four divided by that answer. And I hope I get something that's uh, correct here. Let's see, I get 85.84. Let's look at significant figures. How much am I allowed to use? I can use two digits to write this. So I'll say therefore, the temperature is going to be 
um, 86 degrees Celsius. That's my final answer. So ugly question, yes, but the way to solve it, remember, is first think about what is losing temperature, what's gaining temperature, and you set yourself up a separate, you know, Q lost equals Q gained equation. And when you do that, then you set up a Q equals MC delta T for each of them. And in case there were other players in here, just whoever lost energy, put them on one side, do a Q equals MC delta T for that one as well. So you might have had, uh, like, you know, a Q equals MC delta T plus another MC delta T equals another MC delta T. So you can have basically all the terms that are gaining or losing temperature. Just put them on the gaining or losing side, add up all the different Qs basically, and then solve for whatever you need to solve for.